got the serious look just like y'all got. The serious, intense look. Because he's trying to find his way. He's trying to figure it out. It's frustrating. I'm trying to listen to God. I, I got my own flesh in my pulling me here, my own desire, my family, my friends, all these things is, is, is distracting me from the truth. And it's difficult to give in, especially when you're young, man. But if you can go through it, you'll come out like gold. If I can go through the fire, they don't want to go through the fire. They want to the lotto and go to Perfect. Jamaica and the Bahamas and do their own selfish thing. But he said, if you wait, so I exalt you, I give you desires of your heart. But it's difficult to wait because everybody in a hurry. Technology, it's, it's fast, it's in a hurry. They're angry, they're frustrated, they got time, they're on the cell phone, they want to text message you, y'all in the same car, you're going to text message him, he right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody in a hurry, I don't know where they're going, but when they get there, oh, they're going to be sorry. The faster you try to get there, that career, that money, and you're going to figure it out that, man, it was the journey. It was not the destination. You was in a hurry to get there, to come up, to be this, to be that. And when you get there, you're going to feel discouraged more than you did before you even started to get there. Because it was the journey, the people that you didn't stop to talk to like me at check -in. The people at the gas station. You was in a hurry to get there, but it was the journey. The more humble you be, then the more you can be fulfilled with the truth. But when you think you got it and you're on your way, then you're going to get less of it because can't nobody talk to you. You can't stop. You're in a hurry. It's a difficult thing, but you got it. I see the intensity. He showed you how to relate, connect to the people. I would say this, it's a man with pushing a basket. This man right here, they brilliant you now. Don't, don't look at the outside appearance. I've seen him in action. He was pushing a basket. And I was under the bridge. And I was talking to everybody except him. He was the last person I talked to. He said, why didn't you talk to me first? He said, I should have talked. He said, don't you ever... Passed by a man pushing a basket and don't acknowledge him. I, I never do it in my life again. I talk to the person pushing that basket. How's your day? How you doing? I talk to the homeless people because they say be careful how you entertain strangers. And most people that they came off the street and they got their career together, they won't even let you know that they've been through it. They try to act brand new. They it's a testimony. What you go through, what you go through, it's for us to inspire somebody else. It's for me to pull the weak ones up. It's for you to pull the weak ones up. We don't go through this because of our own selfish reasons. We go through this to give them a testimony of how far God has brought me. It, it was never about me. I thought about me. Why I'm going through this. He said, back up, man. Who are you going to inspire? Who are you going to tell somebody about the glory and the grace of God if you don't go through it? Get out of yourself. And once I step back, I've been seeing the deep things of God. And so I don't play with him. I don't ask him for a lot. I just say, give me my, my portion for the day. I don't want a lot of things. Just give me enough that I can deal with. He said, I give you, a, but fulfill your bond. Greater than you can ever ask. I know what you desire. I know what you need. But Lord, give me my portion where I can be grateful. Where I can be thankful. They unthankful. They unholy. They ungrateful. They got a job. They don't want the job. They got 40 hours. You can't work on Saturdays. You can't work on Sundays. Now you got three days. You stay always complaining and griping and murmuring. Stop it. He said be grateful with the little things. And wait and I, I put you there. But he going to put us in a place where they appreciate me and the job. Don't nobody take time to let them know why they're doing things they're doing. And that's the whole purpose of life. Let them know what they're doing wrong if you see it. I 
I always knew I was doing wrong. What about when they showed me long suffering? What about when they forgave me, but I can't forgive him? He did. He made a promise. I made a promise. I didn't fulfill it. They didn't go off on me. Well, I got to go off on him because he didn't fulfill his commitment. That's wrong. You got to teach. They don't know. The only God they know is through you. Through your experience. They don't know about church because you can't go to church because it's a business. And all the church people, it's a clique, it's a club. And they done forgot about God. It's a business. Look here. It's just the world. Ain't nobody being bold and talking about God because don't pray in school, take the prayer out of school, all these things, it's the world. We're getting in a time where God is not popular no more. And if you talk about it, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. I believe in this. I don't care what you believe in. Let my spirit speak for me. Let my action. But it was a time when I was just a hearer and not a doer. But it got to balance out. You got to go through the fire in order to be a doer too. You're going to be a hearer, then you're going to be a doer. But don't let people throw you off your journey. You can't beat nothing. To, it's between your relationship with God. They can't understand you all the time because you're trying to figure out your way. I'm trying to figure out my way. I can't prove nothing to them all the time. I don't need them to figure me out. All I got to do is just be patient and do what was in my ability, my boundary. I don't need to outstep my boundaries. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. You didn't feel me? No, you can't even feel me. I can't put the expectation on you. I don't always feel me, understand me. So that's wrong. Be humble. Acknowledge him in all your ways. When I do wrong, I said something wrong to offend you. Forgive me. I got to say it right away get it over with. If I offend somebody at work, look, if, if they persecute me, look at God trying to strengthen me to show them who I serve. I say I believe I'm working with it. Well, teach them. They don't know. They don't know why they're doing that, why they're doing that to me. Let, let your light shine among men. They might glorify your Father in heaven. It's real, man. I experience it all the time, 24 7. But I asked for it. I wanted to be a preacher when I was six, but I didn't know the price I had to pay. Much wisdom, much grief. Much sorrow. Ain't no other way you're going to get it. But if you can just go through the fire, you'll be like gold. When you take the jury to the pawn shop, right. how do they determine if it's real or fake? They put it through the acid test. They put the fire upon it. That's how we know if we're real or fake. We're going to go through the fire. You're going to have disagreement with each other, but it's okay. You're going to be friends. But if you have a disagreement, it's just a disagreement. That don't mean you ain't got to see him no more and talk to her or talk to her or whatever. I ain't got nothing to hide. My burdens are heavy, but when I'm weak, he's strong through me. He speaks through me. The weaker I get, the more frustrated I get with my life. And I did this, I did that. Then the more he speaks through me, the more he takes control of me. That's just what he wants you at. Get frustrated. That's when he gonna speak through you. But you gotta, you, he gotta get you in that point where ain't nowhere else to go. But to him, he said, "Those that I love, I correct them, I chastise them." When you go to jail, it's called the Department of Correction, Rehabilitation. <laughs> but we get mad at the correction. He said, "If I didn't love you, I would correct you." He could have took our life. Amen. Amen. He can take the light. But he corrected me. I just thank God for y'all. But this is what Solomon asked. Solomon was the wisest man that lived. He had everything that man could desire. But one thing God said, leave the fire women alone. But he couldn't understand why he had a desire for the fire women. But see, the Lord knew that they were going to turn his heart against him. They were going to make him idol worship and build a God, but he didn't understand it. And I'm going to say this, the preacher, he searched the world out. He said, I want to know the, the, the basis behind wisdom and knowledge and understanding and foolishness. 
See, you can't know wisdom and knowledge unless you be a fool. But we don't want to be foolish. That's the only way you're going to get it. You got to be a fool first. How you going to know a fool when you see a fool? How you going to know foolishness if you haven't been foolish? See, you can't know wisdom and knowledge unless you be a fool. But we don't want to be foolish. That's the only way you're going to get it. You got to be a fool first. How you going to know a fool when you see a fool? How you gonna know foolishness if you haven't been foolish? Foolishness, it comes with, it's painful. Because we think we all are there. We got a lot of abilities we can create, we can be inventors, but we're limited. If I understand that I'm limited, then that's when God takes control and gives me the wisdom that I, I desire. Humility, be humble. If you don't understand your purpose, Ask God. But ask him in sincerity. What's my purpose, God? Did you ever ask that question? What's my purpose? Why I'm here? What am I meant to do? But sometimes he can't tell us all at once. It might be too much. 